in the medical mystery of spontaneous healing, can the power of positivity turn around even the grimmest diagnosis? We all have the ability, in fact, to spontaneously heal ourselves. Now, Patricia's here. She says that you went through a spontaneous healing process, and this happened after she was diagnosed with an incurable disease. I want to point out something. Patricia's a doctor. The doctor. So explain what was going on with you. Bring us up to speed, because if it comes from your lips, it's that much more meaningful to me. I guess being a medical doctor, when you get a lethal diagnosis, you know the reality of what's going on. It's like, wow. Yes. Um, I was given the diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. To put it in layman's terms, it's where normal people's lung tissue is like tissue paper for air to get through. Mine was gradually becoming more like cardboard so that air could not get through. So it's explain what life is like when, as a physician, you're told, and I have your medical records that confirm it, that you have a diagnosis that's going to lead to probably, at most, a four-year life expectancy. How do you begin to put the pieces of this together? I guess I'm one of these very practical people that I can't change what the microscope said, but I can live the best I can. Yeah. And so you began doing that. Exactly. Different approach. Exactly. What did you do exactly? Um, well, first of all, I did continue with uh, Western medicine, but I added the um, laughter, I added positive quotes, I added Tai Chi, and then I added going to somebody who's known to be a conduit of miracles. And your health status today, many years after you're supposed to have <laughs> passed away? I, I was not supposed to see the year 2000. And the last 20 years, I've been getting younger instead of older. Perfect. Now, imagine if we study all the people who have healed, cases like Patricia and Ray. You know, aren't as rare as you think, which means someone we could probably all use. So let me bring in Dr. Jeffrey Rediger. Uh, Dr. Rediger researches cases of what he calls spontaneous healing. Thank you for being here. And congratulations on your work here. You're researching cases of patients who beat the odds. All right, so what has your experience been? How rare is spontaneous healing? It's not as rare as we think. Um, I have yet to give a talk where someone does not come up to me afterwards and say, you need to talk to this patient or you need to talk to my aunt. There's a lot of cases buried out there without a voice, and we just don't study these things. Many cases across many different kinds of illnesses, there are common patterns, and it's just that we've never studied them. The word spontaneous means without cause. Everything has a cause. We just never ask the question. So put your doctor hat on. You mentioned the word spontaneous is not the right word because everything has a cause. Right. What do you think is the unifying cause? And just give me one leading uh, possibility. Well, like turning our immune system on. Or yes. I, in the book, I talk about the four pillars of health and healing and well-being, and I really try to make the point that this is not just about healing; it's also about well-being, and we all need more vitality, more well-being in our lives. So these four pillars. Um, the first is nutrition. You want to eat the good stuff, you know, mostly plants, avoid processed foods, avoid the refined flours and sugars, avoid a lot of the chemicals. The next pillar is um, you need to heal the relationship with your immune system, and that's a big, a big thing to do. So you need to avoid toxins, don't over-medicate, give yourself plenty of water, flushing your lymph system regularly is a big deal and get plenty of rest and spend time with people you love who make you laugh. Those kinds of things are really important. The third pillar of health and well-being is you need to change your relationship with stress. You need to eliminate toxic stress. Um, can be abusive relationships, can be uh, a work environment where you're not learning and growing, but you're bathing your body in stress hormones all day long. That's not good for you. And you need to limit your exposure to those. The fourth pillar is the biggest deal, and it's about healing your identity. I view self-compassion and authenticity as a bank account. If you keep taking out withdrawals to um, meet the expectations of others or take care of others instead of also attending to your own authentic needs as a human being, you will end up depleted and, and eventually sick. You will be psychologically and medically ill. I think it's a beautiful summary, a holistic vision for what a lot of us can do, whether we're threatened, threatened with a life-threatening disorder or not. Yeah. Uh, that's a book called Cure, the Life-Changing Science of Spontaneous Healing. 
Well done, and I appreciate all your research. In fact, the book is so important that Dr. Redger has agreed to give each of you a copy. It is to the audience, everyone else. We'll be right back.